Uh, good afternoon. Good to see everyone. Uh, you know, big day, obviously, Saturday for a number of reasons. But first of all, we get to recognize uh, 19 seniors in our football family, uh, some that have been here longer than others. Uh, but they've meant so much to our program. They've been through a lot together. Uh, so it's uh, very fitting that we would honor them uh, in moving forward. And as we continue to move the football program forward, uh, great challenge this week uh, with Vanderbilt as good of a defensive football team as we faced, uh, explosive, can run uh, offensively. Uh, it all starts with Ralph Webb. I think he's one of the best running backs in our conference. Very explosive, uh, can hit the home run. And uh, they're doing some good things and good special teams, but a good football team. And uh, it's going to be a great challenge again, a lot on, a lot on the line. Uh, and it all happens in our week of preparation as we continue to move forward. So I'll answer any questions you may have. Jimmy right here in the front. Butch, in, in regard to players not wearing long sleeves during a game, is that something that you've always done as a coach? Is it something that you saw another coach do and you thought that was a good idea? What, what was the origin of that? It's something we've kind of believed in everywhere we've, we've been. And it's just it's a part of us you know, being mentally tough and embracing the elements and our players fed off it. And our players did an incredible job with that. Uh, they took great pride in it, uh, you know, and it's just, it's a staple of who we are. It's a pride of who we are. It's a mental toughness thing. Now, you know, we don't go to the extremes, you know, they, we take every precautionary measure on the sideline. And, you know, I thought our equipment staff and everyone with our game day operations of being on the road did a phenomenal job of making sure our players were warm and making sure our players needed everything uh, that it took to win the football game. Even, uh, you know, bringing in some ski masks with the doctors on game day from Knoxville. Uh, just all those little things uh, add up and that's the quality of people that we have here and it's all about our players. Uh, but it's just a mindset, it's a program philosophy and it's a toughness. And I know our players believe in it. I know you all face maybe some more productive offenses earlier in the season than you have in the second half of the season, but obviously our defensive numbers have gotten a lot better. What are you seeing from your defense that's kind of caused the improvement other than just the product of the schedule? Well, when you talk about schedule, I think of staying on schedule in terms of uh, we're able to generate more second and long, third and long situations and any time you can create third and long situations, it becomes advantageous for you. Uh, so I think staying ahead of the sticks, uh, improving our tackling, uh, swarming to the football, um, you know, all those things, the small details, it's always the little things that nobody sees that adds up to the big things that everyone sees. And so it's those small details of, you know, getting, you know, six, seven, eight hats to the football. It's, uh, you know, winning your one-on-one -on -one matchups in the line of scrimmage. I think, you know, our defensive line continues to improve and get better. You know, I think Darren Kirkland continues to improve with the volume of repetitions uh, that he's gaining. Uh, so I think there's a lot that goes into it, but it's playing team-style defense. And we're not making very many, many mental errors right now. Um, so I think there, it's a byproduct of a lot of little things that our players are doing well right now. Vanderbilt's defense is ranked fifth nationally in red zone defense. Um, against Missouri, the team did a good job moving the ball between the 20s, struggled a little bit in the red zone to score touchdowns. Uh, what is it that you see on film for Vanderbilt that makes them so good in the red zone, and what does this offense need to do to improve uh, you know, scoring sure. touchdowns in the red zone as opposed to field goals? Yep. Well, I think, first of all, part of Vanderbilt being so successful in the red zone is they're a very difficult defense to move the ball methodically down the field. Uh, you know, eventually they're so good, they're, they're going to have a negative yardage football play. They're going to generate a disruption. They're going to generate something. So I think the longer the drive goes, uh, the better they become. Uh, so it's just it's really hard to score on them. They have very, very good team speed. Uh, they play with great effort. Uh, they have a tenacity about themselves, a relentlessness. And uh, they're very, very physical. We found that out firsthand last year. Uh, so it's going to be critical for us that when we do get the ball in the red zone, we have to come away with seven points. I believe they made uh, 
Texas A&M kicked six field goals Saturday night. Uh, you know, for us, it's it comes down to execution. Uh, you know, whether it's running the right routes, the drop, the the depths. Uh, you know, getting more yardage when we run the football it just comes down to overall execution. And what happens in the red zone is your landmark shrink. The game becomes condensed. The field becomes condensed. Your throwing windows become tighter. Everything shrinks. So you have to be that much more perfect in your execution and in your technique. But you've kind of said all year you want to improve by 1% every day. Where do you feel like that is accumulated? Where do you feel like you guys have improved the most throughout the season? Well, I think, first of all, just our overall growth of our football team, uh, we've continued to improve. And that's what we talk about is, you know, having constant, never-ending improvement in our football program and our football team and not uh, – peaking and then dropping down, just continuing to improve and get better. So I think just the overall growth in terms of maturation, of fundamentals, the fine details, them really understanding complementary football. And when you go into a game, uh, you have a game plan, you have a formula to win. And everything is about matchups. One team you may match up better with than other teams. That's why, you know, each game is different. It's a, it's a one-week season it's a one game season just because football is a game of matchups so you know that's why we don't look at records or rivalries or all that we look at matchups and you match up better against some teams than others and so you have to be able to have a plan you have to have to be able to have a formula to execute the game plan to win the game and you know in the SEC there's very few uncontested wins and that's what makes this league very very special any win is a great win the moment you stop enjoying wins, you need to get out of this profession because they're hard to come by and you work so hard at it. Our players work so hard at it. Um, but again, it, there's very few uncontested wins and that's why it's a week to week season. But I just think them understanding that, uh, you know, having a consistency approach every day, uh, having very good practices and holding each other accountable. And we're executing now in some, some areas as well. And, uh, so I just think an overall growth throughout the course of the year. Which Coleman Thomas was named the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. Just where, where have you seen him improve over the course of the season? How valuable has he been at that center position? Coleman continues to get better and better and better. Uh, the use of his hands, uh, there's been times where his base was widening and he was on the ground too much and he's really tried to work hard on narrowing his base. And again, it goes back to you know, the evolution of the team, just, you know, the fundamentals, the fine details. He works his craft every day in that want to improve. And I think our older players have done a very good job of mentoring him and holding him accountable for the standard and the expectation as well. But uh, Coleman has really taken great pride in his performance uh, in his week of preparation. Coach, having won four straight games, does that make it easier to, to go to work and to go to practice? And how can – does it make it easier to continue to keep building? Well, anytime you win, uh, you know, it makes it better. So one coach told me, uh, when you win, the food is hotter, the drinks are colder, and everything's better. Uh, but it's also keeping things in perspective is continuing to grow and elevate our football team and our football program and not letting anything uh, – be swept under the rug. I think sometimes when you win, uh, you have a tendency to fight human complacency in terms of sweeping things under the rug, and we'll never do that here. Uh, but it's a tribute to our players. Uh, our players, their mindset, their attitudes, uh, the way they, they prepare throughout the course of a week, uh, their preparation on game day, you know, all that. You, you wouldn't do that if we didn't have great competitive character in our football program. Uh, but obviously, you're in the profession to help young adults and to grow and mentor them and, and see them mature. And you're also measured by wins and losses. So, you know, that's what the game's about, is about winning the football games. Uh, two questions. First, do you have any update on the, on the state of the field? And also, do you have any update on injury reports? I'm two for two. I wrote down what you're going to ask me, and I'm two for two. I'm going to play the lotto today. Uh, no, uh, in terms of the field, uh, we're anticipating the field's going to be there, and we're going to play on it on Saturday. Uh, 
I'm more concerned about Vanderbilt and, you know, the competition and a great defense and a hungry football team coming in here and getting our team ready to play our best football game. In terms of injuries, uh, you know, no new injuries really from the game. Uh, it was a hard fought game, but uh, nothing serious. Uh, we fully anticipate Juwan Jennings to practice today. Uh, so again, we expect everyone to be available. Steve and Jimmy and Rob, Nick. You were, I'm mean, just wondering, you talked about the pressure in this conference, but I'm just wondering what the risk reward is. Obviously you're paid better, the spotlight's brighter, but the pressure's greater. I was just wondering, what were the expectations going, what did you know about the expectations of playing, coaching in this conference going in, and how has it kind of differed from what maybe you were expecting when you arrived? It really isn't anything that I didn't expect. Uh, you know, had a lot of friends that coach in this conference, a lot of head coaching friends that have coached in this conference and do coach in this conference, and there's a reason why it's the best football conference in the country. But when everyone asks me, my response is always the same. Every day you get up, it's fourth and one for the national championship. It doesn't matter if it's in recruiting. It doesn't matter if it's in the off season. It doesn't matter during the season. Uh, again, everything is contested in everything that you do in this conference from a competitive standpoint, even from a resource standpoint, from facilities to, you know, what could you do each and every day to elevate your program? Everyone's looking for a competitive advantage. Uh, the biggest thing is it puts years on your life. Uh, my wife showed me a picture of three short years ago, and uh, I look like a different person, so I have to practice what I preach and get some health back. But, um, you know, when you're passionate about what you do and – we have a passionate fan base here, and, and all, I'm, all I'm concerned about is our players and, and, and giving our fans a product that they can be very proud of. Jimmy Hines, Rob, Nick Carboni. Butch, a couple of questions. Uh, one is you, you closed out the game against Missouri in particular with that drive that, that ate up five minutes. Do you feel like that proves now that you can close out a game, or do you still need to do that against a top 25 opponent? I think any time you can do that, uh, it's a great teach point. It builds confidence. The other thing when you talk about running the clock out that I thought is a tremendous teaching point moving forward was uh, when we gave up the long pass and Malik Foreman tackled the wide receiver. And initially, he, it was ruled a touchdown and then via video replay, and I believe it took all four downs for them to score from the one-yard line. To me, that was the maturation of a football team. And I believe it took a little over two minutes off the clock as well. And to me, that was as big of a, a play in that sequence. And what we talk about, about just give me a place to stand. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, with an inch to go or on the five-yard line, just give us a place to stand. So all those things are great teaching points and moving forward. And when you have success with those teaching points, it just helps, obviously, in the confidence end of things as well. And, and with Josh Dobbs, how much better of a passer is he now than he was when he came in as a freshman? And what are the things that you can do to continue to improve his accuracy? Josh continues to get better and better and better. Uh, you know, and, you know, like we talk about the quarterback, you know, it's a lot like the coaches, you know, they get probably too much praise when you win and too much blame when you lose. A quarterback is a byproduct of everyone around them. And a lot of times they just see the quarterback standing there. They don't see there may be a, a depth, you know, that the receiver didn't run the appropriate depth or he ran the wrong route or we didn't, we didn't do something in protection. So the quarterback is a byproduct of individuals around him. Uh, but I think Josh continues to grow and develop. He's, you know, come so far even in this year. Uh, there's still a lot of room for development. That's what makes this game of football so great is you can constantly get better. Uh, but he has taken tremendous strides. Coach, just to pile on Coleman and his maturation, just the entire run game, you guys are second in the league. You've, you've got more rushing attempts. Can you talk about how that has gotten better as the year has gone on and, and kind of talk a little bit about Jalen and how much you were able to lean on him Saturday? It has become a source of pride for us. Obviously, we're going to be challenged with a, with a defensive football team coming in here that takes pride in stopping the run. So again, this will be our biggest challenge to date, but I believe it's the best average per game since 1994, that's 21 years, uh, in a, in averaging 214 yards a game. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, obviously, the maturation of the offensive line, uh, it starts with them, it's, it's a line of scrimmage game. 
obviously Jalen Hurd. I thought, you know, Jalen, I think what he had 32 carries, uh, you know, did a great job in terms of managing the workload. Alvin Kamara continues to give us quality yards as well. Excited about him as well. I think the receivers uh, have done a good job of blocking, and I think part of that maturation process has really been the growth and development of Ethan Wolf. I think Ethan Wolf continues to develop. Uh, Alex Ellis has done some good things, so a total team effort. Uh, but again, we're going to be challenged uh, tremendously this week with a great defense. And you know, you talk about watching them run around and, and the things that they do. You put the video on, and right away, it just takes two or three plays, uh, and you know you're playing a, a dominant team Saturday. Uh, more about the run game, but more specifically about the line. And it almost seems that Coleman's story is representative of the whole line, position switches, yeah. adversities, injuries. How much pride does that group take in the way they're playing right now, having a 1,000-yard rusher and perhaps the best running season here since 2004? Tremendous pride, and uh, deservingly so. They work so hard. Uh, they work their craft every day. Uh, they're in the weight room doing extra. They're in the video room. You know, it's Sunday afternoon, and we're already game planning, and they're coming in our room to see the coaches. And uh, they have a lot of confidence right now and belief in each other. Uh, our running backs believe in them. They believe in our running backs. And, and it's, it's been great. It's been great to see. Again, it gets back to that maturation process that, that we spoke about. But it's also having the patience to run the football. And a lot of times, you become impatient with running the football and you know you can uh, you can stop calling the runs and like we talked about sometimes a 2 yard run is a really good run sometimes a 0 yardage run is a good run because you can't have negative yardage football plays i think the other thing in the evolution of our run game is we've been able to minimize uh negative yardage football plays and that all goes hand in hand uh but again we're going to be challenged this week uh, with their front seven. Uh, but I'm, I'm proud of the players and just how much they've grown and they developed. And you, you can see them growing confidence more and more and more in each other, the scheme, and everything. And we have a great group of kids. Uh, we have great character in this football program. I said it from day one. And uh, anything they do doesn't surprise me. Uh, you mentioned the top 19 seniors being honored. One, are any of those guys fourth-year juniors who aren't going to take their fifth year? And two, I guess are you guys going to honor Kurt Majit? Right. We will honor Kurt Majit. And, uh, you know, we'll have some decisions with fourth-year players and, uh, you know, and what they want to do for their fifth year. So the way I look at it is the season's not over with. Uh, you know, it kind of keeps everything in check. Uh, we have another game to play after this. And that's the great thing about it. And it's another time for this football team to be together as Team 119 for another month. So I don't look at it as an end. Uh, there's still a lot of football left to be played. But in terms of fifth-year players, we'll revisit that at, when the season concludes. Have a good day.